Hi guys, so someone asked me to do a quick brush tutorial for Paint Tools I and um, I just offered to do a video tutorial about them because the brushes in Paint Tools I do work a bit differently than for other programs, which is also why Paint Tools I is a bit famous uh, because the brush settings are just really really different. Um, so overall I have three things to talk about first thing is settings, then there's shapes, and then there's textures. So I will start with settings, which is the most important part. Um, you get your brushes over there, in this little corner here, and you have your brush presets in these. You get these presets by right-clicking on one of those corners, and then you have a selection of brushes. Um, this one is a brush for selection, so you can, for example, this one was an eraser, you can paint with a selection or um, if you want another one you can, you can create a bucket and things like that. But these, these top brushes here are the ones that are the most important. You do not really need all of them because most of them um, can be changed to by by using different settings to one another. Um, so overall there's three different types of brushes that are mainly important. The first one is the airbrush and it basically does this. It is a soft brush with a sub soft edge like it is in any program. Then there's the marker and the marker is a really hard brush. Why does it? Okay. A really hard brush with a hard edge and um, yeah it basically just blocks in color then there is the brush brush and this one is the most interesting one because it does use a lot of blending in the brush itself and which, which means you can actually blend very well with the brush you are painting with and this is the brush paintles I got famous for, I think. Um, this is mainly it. You do not really need more than this. You basically do not even need an eraser, eraser because um, you can paint with transparent color here. And the reason why this is so helpful is because you then do not have to change the preset of the brush you are using uh, just for erasing because that can be really time consuming. Um, one quick tip, if you are using a blending brush a lot, then get uh, the color picker either on a hotkey on your keyboard or on your pen, which I'm having now. This is not really brush related, but it saves you a lot of time. Um, okay, so now to the presets. You can see if you select these presets that the settings Paint Tools I offers you to change for these three and this is why they are important because those three are the main differences in settings they offer you. Um, if you use airbrush and marker these are standard settings so a marker is used to just be very very soft in, in drawing yeah, no, the airbrush is very, very soft. And this starts with the upper corner here. If you select this one on the far left, then it is really soft, but the further you go to the right, the harder it gets. So this one is really hard right now. So basically, if you select this one, then it will be a marker. If you select this one, then it will be an airbrush. Um, this setting here is just generally size. This is the minimum size, this is density, minimum density, etc. So I think this is very self-explanatory. Um, another thing that is important are these sliders down here. Because here you can set the global size, but here down there you can link it with your pressure you are using. So if you uh, go all the way down on your slide then your brush will always be very very small if you go all the way up 
then it will be very heavy. Uh, I, I've been using the same pressure for my pen with um, these two swirl thingies. <laughs> so going down very soft, going up very, very thick. Same thing with the density. If you go down a lot, then it is less density. If you go all the way up, then it is way more dense. I always have them up really far because that way I do not need much pressure on my pen. And you should always choose a setting that is comfortable for you to, for you to use all the different sizes um, that Psy offers you, for example, like this. But in a way that you, you are using minimal pressure because if you use high pressure a lot then it can be really straining and hard for your hand. So always keep that in mind to uh, change the settings in a way that you are ergonom ergonomically comfortable with it. Um, if you use the marker it's the exact opposite. You're on this side here so it's really hard. I use this one for blocking in colors so it has high density, min density is up to 100, so there is no change in, uh, in density at all. Um, and this one is just really standard setting over there. Uh, one thing I don't use is this size selection here. The reason why is because if you press Ctrl and Alt, you can, by tearing over the canvas, you can change the brush size to the way you want. So you can have a really big one or a really, really tiny one just by pressing two two keys, you know. Then you also get this, this setting here where you can change the brush size manually or also the density. This density thing is has not been a thing in Paint Sai version 1. As I said, this is version 2. It is, I, I don't know. And uh, yeah, this is an addition in version 2. I rarely use it though, I should use it more often. Either way, this has been the marker. Now for the brush. This is the most interesting one and the one I use the most because it is actually where you're playing with. Like the airbrush is for soft touches and the marker for blocking in colors, but everything in between I use the brush for. So let's say I have two colors here, uh, green and purple, and I want to blend those. Then I pick the color, go into the middle, pick the color, go into the middle, and so on. And it will slowly blend them together. I I might change them in size. Looks really messy now because I've chosen um, opposite colors, but whatever. That way you can see best. Uh, yeah, something like that. Let's leave it like that. So it gives you, if you zoom in, gives you a really nice texture. Like you can see an edge here, you can see one there, etc. And if you compare it to the airbrush, for example, which is very well for blending, obviously, but you can see that the airbrush just looks very generic and also 100% soft. And I don't know if this is what you're going for. If it is, then of course um, use the airbrush, but I don't know, I think it is really generic and I don't really like it. This one is more alive in my opinion. And that way I can basically use it for all kind of shading I'm doing. As I said, I can I can change the blending here down there or I can change the blending down there. So if it is really far up then I need lots of pressure to get the color in, like this. Now no, it's 100% so I cannot get it in at all. Um, now it's really far down, now it's no problem to get the color in at all. So yeah, the further it is up, the more it blends. Delusion doesn't really do much, I don't know. Same as blur pressure or this sharpness or amplified density. Like you can see a bit of difference in ampli amplified density, but just use this one down here, does the same thing. Um, persistence is also very interesting, but I don't use it. I don't know. If you like it, then use it. So I am now choosing a a color that is nowhere in here. I'm having persistence up to 100% and now I'm starting to blend. 
what happens is that it takes the color where I started picking up the brush like this or if I go to green it picks up this color and that way I do not have to uh, to pick the color that I want I just start blending it in and um, yeah it's just I don't know you can use it to refine some things without um, having to worry about the color or if you pick the right color etc and just focus on blending if you if you want that and uh, are looking into that but I rarely use this so yeah this basically I think that basically is it at these settings yeah there you also have a few settings for example if you want to multi multiply it should go darker it doesn't interesting let's use multiply here now it goes darker uh, it didn't because I had persistence up very high now it is still normal now it does multiply yeah those are those are the same in other programs as well um, but I think yeah I think that's been it here is another slider for the stabilizer so if you want to have a different stabilizer for different brushes you can use this this is the global stabili stabilizer so if you have it really far up you have a very smooth line unlike very far down then it is sometimes really messy depending on how good your your um, graphics tablet is I always have it to three I don't know just play around with it um, but yeah that's that's it with the settings so the shapes shapes are what is most interesting in this program because you do not have a setting for um, for the spacing if you have Photoshop for example you have a option for spacing and that means the texture that is underlying in your brush for example in this case a uh, a dot gets spaced either very far apart or very close if it is very close like here then you have a line if it's far apart then uh, you have a line of of dots um, so I doesn't have this so when it comes to shapes you have to take that into account um, and that, that just means that some things aren't possible for example uh, if someone was to draw a bunch of leaves and has a brush with the shape of a leaf um, kind of like this like this is a leaf now and they have it in their brush a lot and then they just tear it over the canvas and there's leaves everywhere this is not possible here I'm sorry but you have a bunch of different possibilities and you actually access them by using certain files like these uh, what what is underlying on the brush is saved somewhere in the program and this is actually where it is saved so if you go to the folder for Sai you have probably somewhere lying around <laughs> I don't know you need to search it then you have uh, the folder Bristol in this folder and there you have the shapes the way it works is it takes this template here this is the the circle which if you if you fill it then you have a basic circle which you use with all these brushes but you can also half fill it what is black is what you're um, what you're drawing with so let's say I take what is called square here uh, where is it it's down here square then I draw with a really sharp edge let's let's use minimal size up to 100 so now it is a a square if I use split split looks like this here then I have two lines like this and that way I can use many many shapes so if there is lots of dots you will have lots of dots in your line like this and you have lots of hair I use this one to paint hair mainly oh no actually I use this one because um, where is it? this one because it is more dense in the middle so these strands look a bit more a bit more natural like hair strands 
Then there's this upper section and this upper section is a different folder. The different folder is blood map and here you have images, not images for your brush but images that are like imagine them being in the background of your canvas. Let's take freckle small because there you can see it the best and the black again is what you're painting with. So if I use freckle small I am painting in small freckles. If you use the scale, then they're small. If you make them bigger, they are way bigger. Now they are really, really small. And if you make them really small, you see this picture that is behind it. So keep that in mind that you either optimize the picture completely or you are dealing with this. But I mainly use it for this big texture here. And you can use it with different way different textures for example lots 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 where is it here let's make it bigger and it does look like that you will always see this picture if you go all the way down by the way because it's just a repeating pattern and you can make both of them yourself or you can download them of course uh, this one by using this template the template uh, either you download it or you just imagine it. It doesn't matter. It only takes 100% black um, pixels and uses it as uses it as a um, a template for your brush. And you need a BMP file, which you can use with size. You don't need a specific program, and it's in the size 63 by 63. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I don't care. Just <laughs> use this. And then you paste it into the folder and you're good to go. Same for blood map. It's also a BMP file and it's 256 by 256. So that way you can make your own, your own, um, not really textures, but your own brush settings. Uh, then the last part is what I rarely use, but it's also there. So um, it doesn't have much difference to this part here, I don't know, it, it had way more difference in version 1 than it now has in version 2. But there, for example, you can have a canvas texture if you make it higher then it does look a bit like a canvas, I don't know. You can also use, uh, no that's the wrong folder, I actually closed it, wonderful. Either way, you can also use these up here for that. So that's a bit useless, but yeah, that's called textures. And that is called uh, circle or just generally um, the brush. Oh, another thing. You can choose the direction. If you choose none, it always goes in one direction. Like now it is really thick, now it is really thin because it always takes this line here and then goes down. And uh, if you use auto or pen direction, it will always go into the direction you're painting with. So that's really, really useful. Uh, now that was it. Yeah. So I hope this helps. I. Just, just to summarize, this is the most important thing, just for blending purposes. Blocking in a really soft brush and everything else is just playing around. So this is really all you need. I hope that helped and bye bye.